Noel Xander's lab test came back negative this morning. No poison, no allergy medicines, no toxoplasmosis. Nada. I even tried Cam's local clone theory and ran a match on the DNA off the Princess Fork. And? The sample I had was seriously degraded, so I could only perform one polymerase chain reaction test. A PCR test amplifies a piece of DNA multiple times, so even a single cell can be analyzed for a match. And from what I can see, he's 100% House of Norland, Sanders' royal lineage. So why is he being a royal pain? It doesn't make any sense. I have more bad news. Appears the prince dragged Michaela to a water park. <laughs> it's all over social media. What? The presentation's in an hour. It's like he's trying to sabotage this trip. Michaela, be 11, let me your phone. Need to call the king and seem to have lost mine riding Splash Canyon. Thank you. Kyle, you get to demonstrate the backpack. That is so cool. Thanks, Michaela. So you're, you're here with Prince Xander again. Oh, no, like I told you yesterday, we're just friends. Hey, I get it. Meaning he's a prince and I'm just a... A uh, simple commoner. Michaela is busy today. Don't distract her. Your Highness, we were talking. Michaela. The sooner a chap like Kyle accepts his station in life, the better off he'll be. Look, Prince Xander. Your Highness, a word. In private. Ooh. Have you heard from Michaela? She said she texted when she got to the presentation. Now she won't answer. I got Bob case. Something's wrong. Agent DeMarco, are we bothering you? Oh, sorry. Uh, doodling helps me think. Cool, innovate sketchpad, huh? Okay. T I B A A C A T S D. That is both amazing and creepy at the same time. I like to accentuate the eyes with the windows of the soul. Poetic, but it also gives me an idea. So there's like a hundred pics on Prince Sanders' Insta feed from a Cilia selfies contest. Zooming into his eye. Now I'll compare a still from Xander's first transmission with us. Zooming in. We're running an online iris scanning program. Now scan the HI for its unique characteristics. Like fingerprints. Or a custom-made couture gown. No two irises are the same. Neither are these. These irises are from two different people. Xander's not a clone, but a double. They could try and sabotage the presentation. Michaela could be in danger. We need to get to Maywood Glen Tech like 10 minutes ago. Don't worry, Agent DeMarco, I've got your back. Thanks. I feel better already. I've scanned the leaf for any hidden clues or invisible ink. Nothing. <laughs> and I think I may be allergic. Ooh, Em. You only get your microscope out when it's serious business. What are we looking at? How do you drop this outside the elevator? I think it might be a clue as to what she's up to. One clue? It's a strange thing to find in Maywood Glen. It's a piece of a banana leaf. Unless your sister went out for Guatemalan tamales with ancho chili sauce wrapped in banana leaves, I've got nada. Did y'all know the banana is naturally radioactive because of the potassium content and the teeny amounts of potassium 40? Are you suggesting my sister might be radioactive? Don't fret. <laughs> the levels are insignificant. Not like she's gonna start glowing in the dark. <laughs> Good afternoon, agents. Hoping for a progress report. Well, I did restock the fridge with your cold-pressed green juice. Nicely done. But I was referring to the three T's. Our latest suspect is Elite's lighting engineer. Cam and Briar on it. And we were just discussing this harmless piece of banana leaf. Same one I noticed on your nightstand, Agent McAllister. Maddie dropped it when we saw her in the hotel. Which I forgot to mention. Sorry. But we did see those banana leaves down at the Maywell Glen docks. Which means your sister might have been down at the docks. The same docks where the three T's are arriving. 
Your colleagues are raising a very interesting possibility. Which I refuse to believe. There's no way Maddie could be involved with the 3T robberies. Is that Agent McAllister talking or a worried sister? I adore them both, but this is definitely worried sister. <laughs> Salud. Well, here's what I think. Maybe Maddie was trying to leave us a clue. Maybe she really is in danger. We're going down to the docks, so whatever the truth is, we're gonna get some answers. Right, good idea. <laughs> you know what you need to do. And I know you guys are giving me that Michaela's got it all wrong look. <laughs> Don't be you silly. You got it all wrong. Meaning you've got it all wrong that we think you've got it all wrong. I'm gonna stop talking. Over the next four days, you will train for a simulated shuttle launch, travel on the space station, and live on Mars in our deep space habitat geolab, or HAB for short. A mission that would ordinarily take nine months. Oh, this place is awesome. Did you see that deep space glove box? They use it to study samples collected during spacewalks. I mean, <laughs> how about that trash to gas reactor developed to recycle in deep space and convert it to methane and other gases? I think I'm dreaming. Well, I must be dreaming too because there's no way little Cameron Coyle belongs here. For reals. The good news. Who's that? Justin's brother, Zach. One year older and 10 times more irritating. Now, Straight from the International Space Station, currently traveling 220 miles above the Earth, I give you Destination Mars Camp graduate, flight engineer, Chris Bryant. Welcome, trainees, and congratulations. Your acceptance into the DM program is quite an accomplishment. And I should know, I attended Destination Mars Camp, and now I'm here floating in micro-G. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I can't believe that. Amazing. That's so awesome. <gasps> So cool. I, I need to try that. That's... But I'm here to tell you, this is no summer fun camp. This program will be challenging, so stay on your game. In space, things go wrong, but it will be your job to work together to solve problems as they arise. Because on Mars, your life and those of your fellow astronauts depend upon it. So, for your first question, who can tell me what the Mars atmosphere is made of? Well, then I hope next time we speak, one of you will have the answer. Until then. Why don't you all take a few minutes to introduce yourselves and we'll get started. Dad, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again for letting me come here. You're very welcome, sweetheart, but you're the one who earned this. Are you sure it's not too expensive? Well, I'm sure. I'll go meet the others. These submissions are amazing. <laughs> that was very sweet. Yeah, yeah, she's a great kid. <laughs> I'm Jenny. Jenny Wallace. Charles Coyle. My friends call me Chuck. Oh. Actually, no, that, that's not true. Uh, no one calls me Chuck. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> just, let's just stick with Charles. Okay, Charlie, it is. <laughs> That's my daughter, Tessa. It's a silver-based astronomical telescope. Not only does it have a high reflectance rating, but its coating makes it less susceptible to stress in the Mars atmosphere. <laughs> Amazing! I can't believe you made that! So this is what you submitted to get into the Mars camp? Yep. It's a retractable treadmill built so astronauts can exercise more. In space, due to microgravity, our proximal femoral bone loses up to 15% of its mass per month. You mean 1.5% bone mass per month, right, Gordon? Right, of course. Either way, it'll help me keep my awesomely toned bod on <laughs> Mars. Mm. I'd show you both a real six pack, but it'd be like staring into the sun. Please don't. First lesson of DM camp, don't pay attention to that guy. You know you can't do that, Camelot. Space, I'm a bright shining star. 
Camelot? He even sounds like Justin. Where do you think Justin learned it? Project MC Script.